BoxingBoys.com live here with David Benavidez, the Mexican monster. Champ, a lot's going on. Obviously, uh, big announcement. You're moving up to 175. I guess the biggest question for everyone is why announce a fight before Canelo announces that he's not picking you? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I've been wanting to go up to 175 for a long, long time. I've been the number one um, contender to fight for the WBC for three years already. Um, my PBC and Al, uh, Al Heyman and Samson were negotiating, and you know, Canelo didn't show no interest to fight me. So, you know, like I said, I'm not I'm not going to be sitting around waiting for Canelo. You know, there's still another, there's still more weight classes to conquer. You know, I've been wanting to go up to 175 for a long, long time. This fight, the winner of this fight is going to win, uh, be the winner of the interim WBC belt, and that puts you in the number one spot to fight the winner of, of Bivol and Berbiev. So like I said, I'm, if he's not going to want to give me the fight, there's nothing much I could do. So now I'm going up and wait. Um, but I, I was speaking to um, Luis de Cubas and Marisa Suleiman said that they're going to see. If not, they might strip. Uh, they're they're going to see if Canelo still wants to fight in September. And if not, they'll strip him the belt. So, I mean, we're, we're still going to see. But like I said, I'm not going to put my career on pause because some, uh, somebody else doesn't want to fight me. So I'm going to go try to conquer other weight divisions and win other crowns. Do you think it's going to be difficult for you to come up to 75 and then potentially come back down? And, and do you feel like you're opening the door for him to put you in a rehydration clause or a catchweight, have you go up and say, yeah, come back down and fight me now? You know, all this stuff that you're telling me, it might be a possibility. But like I said, I can't just think about what he wants to do. Um, I could definitely come back down to 168, but I want to go up to 175. Um, like I said, it's been my dream to conquer other weight divisions and win all these belts. If I'm in a position where I'm not going to fight for all the world titles, then why am I still in this weight class? You know, so um, we're going to take it one fight at a time. And we're going we're gonna to go up to 175, see how we feel. And if we can come back down, we'll come back down. If there's no reason to come back down, then we'll come da back down. But if there's other big fights to be made, I will come back down. Now, were you made aware that the opponent that you're going to face is an Eddie Reynoso managed fighter and he's trained by Eddie? No, I haven't. Uh, I didn't know that at all. I, I seen that he was training with um, uh, Canelo's team, but that's the only uh, the only thing I know about that. But like I said, if I can't get to Canelo, I'm gonna beat up everybody around his, in, in his team. Uh, we know we, we did Ellis, and now we're gonna do uh, Alexander. Now knowing that you know Eddie is involved, Reynoso, does that make you feel some type of way that he's willing to negotiate a fight with uh, another fighter that he manages and not the one you really want? I don't feel any type of way. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not bothered by what Canelo wants to do. Like I said, I'm not going to put my career on pause. If that's what he wants to do, then we missed out a big opportunity to make the fights happen for the fans. You know, at the end of the day, this is what we have to do for the fans. But if they don't want to do it, then it's out of my reach and I can't, out of my control. I can't do nothing about it. Now, when it comes to Bivu and Better Beef, obviously people are assuming that that's who you're lining up to face. But did you know that they have a rematch? Yeah, I mean, um... Like I said, when you're taking one fight at a time, I'm going up there to see. Um, you know, definitely this is a hard fight. Uh, it's not an easy fight. The guy's only loss is to better be it. And, um, you know, he beat the Donna Stevenson. So we're, we're, we got to be um, focused on this fight. Whatever comes after, I don't, I don't know. We're just like I said, we take it one, one step at a time. Um, we'll see what happens. We're going to win this fight, and then we'll see what happens after that. Now... You, you're moving up. Is it just because of Canelo? You don't like the names Christian and Billy, David Morrell, Eric Baziana, and none of those guys want to make you stay in the division? Those are good names, yeah. I'm not I'm not leaving the division. You guys are making it seem like I'm leaving. I'm just going up and winning another fight up there. You know, there's an opportunity to win the fight for another belt. So, like I said, at the end of the day, like Javante Davis did it. He went up and he came back down. You know, there's been a lot of fighters that do it. I could do, I could do the same thing. You know, those are... Definitely big fights, but the fights that I want to make right now, these are the biggest ones that go up to 175. Like I said, if I've earned a title shot, I haven't got the title shot, so I think I've earned one fight where I could go up and fight for another belt. You know, at the end of the day, this is, you know, I still have a, a long time, a long time to fight, so I'm not going to be at 168 my whole career, but I think right now is a perfect time to go see how 175 feels. Now, you made it clear you can come back down, but Devin Haney said that, and he's got... He's got his version of Canelo at 35, and once he got to 40, ballooned up to 165 on fight night, he said, I'm not coming back down. Do you think that possibility can exist for you where you get there, you just feel too good? It, it definitely can. Uh, it can happen, but like I said, um, I don't know. I just want to I, I wanna, I, I make the best fights happen. That's, that's always what I have, I've, I've led my career. Uh, I've always steered my career like that. I've always wanted to make the best fights happen. 
And if things are tied up at 175, then like I said, there's still David Morrell, there's still Munguia. Um, those are the two fights that don't even interest me at 168. And then um, and the Canelo fight, obviously. So we'll see, like I said, one step, one, one step at a time. Moving to 175, obviously, Bivol got that win over Canelo, but there's more rumors surfacing and interviews with Bivol of you sparring him. Those sessions seem like you got the best of them. Even your current opponent, there's audio and video surfacing of him saying you kicked his ass in sparring. Uh, does that make it more difficult to get fights? Because these guys have already experienced what you bring in the ring. It definitely does make it more difficult. I mean, these guys know I'm not playing, but at the end of the day, the number one, sp the spots are there. They should be respected by the sanctioned bodies. And, you know, like I said, if you guys are scared of, you know, give me the fights, then, what, then what's happening? You know, you guys don't have confidence in yourself. I'm not saying that about anybody, but if these guys, they didn't want to fight me, there's nothing I could do. I know what I could do with myself. I, I know what I'm capable of, and I I'm willing to put, put it against, uh, put it on the line against anybody. All right, so these are all from the people. Like I said, when you're ready to go, stop me. Uh, we got, what's up, champ? Jake from Alabama. How important is film study for you, uh, for you guys in camp? Has there ever been a fighter in the past where you picked up a certain tendency on film and then exploited it very well on fight night? I would say all my fight, all the people I fought, you know, I've really exposed everybody. I've beat the shit out of everybody, um, literally, and every day. What I tell young fighters too, that you always gotta evolve. You can't be the same fighter you were back then. Even if you're just studying another fighter, there's always stuff that you could do to improve. Like today, let me just show you. This should be, this should be something that you wanna learn every single day. Um, today, how I go about my day, you know, I watch boxing, you know, I let the ideas come to me and then I write shit down. These are my, sh what I was working today, daily, like daily tasks, I did this all today. And then I'm gonna show yeah, you. Yeah, so you got a list that you go I'll show you notes there. from old. Like, I'll show you notes from old uh, camps. They get fucking training routines. They get, I have a whole bunch of shit right here. But as for young fighters, if you really want to be the best, you know, obviously you got your coach to teach you. But once you get to a level where you and your coach are kind of on the same page, you need to bring something new to the table. You can't always expect the coach to go out there and learn from you. Yes, you're the student of the game, but then. You become the teacher. There becomes a point where you become the teacher. You guys just mix ideas. Like I'm right here with Mateo, with my dad, with Jason. We mix ideas. We see what the best one is, and then we move forward from there. You know, it's very, if you want to get better, like I'm talking about myself, I want to be the greatest. I got to learn from the greatest. I got to watch, every day I watch like about an hour and a half, two hours of boxing, just by myself. I mean, I'm, nobody tells me to do anything. I do Any fighters in particular? I watch Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather because he does everything technically good. If you look at Floyd Mayweather and you just practice one move from him and you just practice like how he does it, you will learn that move to perfection. So I like Mayweather, his defense, he does everything good basically. The ones that have like, uh, that are tenacious and go forward like Roberto Duran, fucking Sugar Ray Leonard, Oscar De La Hoya for his jab, James Tony for his defense, Lomachenko for his ankle, uh, angles, Usyk for his angles. There's just so much different fighters that you could learn off of. Even Devin Haney. Devin Haney is really good too. He's technically sound. He's good at everything. So it's just the different fighters I like to watch. You know, I I'd want to definitely be the best and be the greatest. So I mean, I'm learning from these fighters every day. And I've been boxing for 25 years. So for a person, I hate when people tell me. I hear boxers like, oh, I don't watch boxing. I don't watch film. Like, that, that's too. fucking stupid. For like, honestly, you're a fucking idiot. If you say that you think you're the best, then your career is gonna be short lived. But also, not only for film study, but for you learning, you gotta evolve every single every year. You gotta be different than you were last year. So I just, um, I really do love this. I feel like the older I'm getting, the more in love I'm falling in love. Uh, I'm falling more in love with boxing, and I'm um, also teaching my son and. I'm just enjoying this. You know, now, now, that was amazing to see him pick it yeah. up. It's coming natural. Yeah. Most boxers don't want, like, not most, but when you make it to the level you've made it where you don't need the box anymore, they normally don't want their sons to box. So are you going to let them box? Yeah, to be honest with you, bro, we, man, I, I'm, I cherish boxing so much because it changed my life. It gave me freedom. It gave me ab abilities. It gave me the the... The ability to move my, get my family out, you know, give them, give them a great life, give my dad a good life, everybody, everybody around me, you know, I'm able to help them out to give them a good life. So, 
it made me escape this matrix or whatever it is that I don't have to go you know, work at a job. And I'm not saying that to be cocky, but it's also a message to everybody. You could just follow your dreams and that will you know, take the shackles off you. You're not part of everything. And then it's just, boxing has done that for me. So I wanted my son to be a part of that. If he doesn't want to box, then he doesn't have to box, but he's gonna be training. I don't give a fuck, he's gonna be training until he moves out of my house. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Discipline. Yeah, he got to, you know what I mean? And then not only for that, he could, you know, protect himself and he has to fight or whatever. But like I said, bro, boxing has changed my life for the best. So why would I not want to give my son that opportunity? Bless, bless. Uh, we got, hey champ, Ice from Bad News, Virginia. I was wondering, what is your walk around weight and does that factor into how long this camp will be since moving up in weight? So um, this this time I was doing more weights um, because I, you know, I just been wanting to do more more on the weights. But like 195, 98 right now, I feel good. Like I said, the weight, it doesn't really matter because I have fucking, I train forever. You know what I mean? I'm always training. I might not even have fights, but I'm always training. So right now we have like four, four or five months and I'm already in training camp. You know what I mean? So I just... Uh, but that's kind of normal for you. I feel like you do four-month camps. Yeah, I just, I just I, I love it. You know what I mean? You got to learn how to love everything that's hard. You I, Even for the strength and conditioning, I fucking hate it, but I love it at the same time. So I just I just like working hard, and I just like giving my all in the training camps. And Like I said, it, it's, a, it's a lifestyle now. It's not, I don't see it as training camps. I just I train, you know, work extremely hard every single day. I got uh, former Glendale Gacha. Given the recent news, Canelo leaving PBC, would you consider a buyout of your PBC contract to cross the street for the Saul fight? Fuck no. Bro, like, if I'm just being completely honest with you guys. That's why we're like, you guys, people kept criticizing me saying that I only want a payday, this and that. I've been making good money, bro, for fucking like seven years. Really good money. PBC and Al Heyman have taken care of me. So... What they were offering Canelo, they were offering him close to 60 million. I think that's even before pay-per-view buys. After pay-per-view buys, it would have been a fucking killing. I wasn't getting nothing from, nothing, no percentage. I was getting a, a, a fee of uh, $5 million. I pay out all my people. I think I'm left over with 3.5 before taxes. You know what I mean? So I was fine with that. I was completely fine with that. This guy was taking everything. He was literally taking everything. And I'm not saying that he shouldn't. I mean, if he's entitled to, he's entitled. I don't give a fuck. I wanted the opportunity. But if they're giving them 60 million here, what could they possibly give them over here? It's the same fucking thing. So why would I go across the street when I've been getting treated really good with PBC and Al Heyman? Why would I go across the street when they probably only want to give me a one fight deal? You know what I mean? And they'll be all in favor for Canelo. So it's it's really the same thing. It's not it's not it doesn't have anything to do with promotions, pain or none of that. Canelo don't want to fight. Like, it's just, it's crazy how you guys can't see that. Some of the fans can't see that. He don't want to fight. Well, the, I guess the gossip is that there is a lack of money. Oh, it's all bull, bro, it's all bullshit, bro. Every time Canelo says no, all his fanboys come up with the fucking million excuses from him. What lack of money in there? They're fucking offered him, they offered him to fight. But now he goes across the street and now, so he was supposed to fight Charlo than me. He goes across the street. Now look at his options now. Berlanga and Munguia. Like, come on, bro. That, 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 that fucking says enough, enough on itself. On its own, it says enough. Now, how did you feel with the reports that it wasn't technically your name on a contract? That they had Earl's name and the both Charlo's name and that David's name allegedly was not on the contract according to all these big-time Dan Rayfield reporters? Bro, if Canelo wanted to fight me and he knows that's the most lucrative fight to be made right now, if you really wanted to make all that fucking money, the fight would have been made. That's what I'm saying. There's excuse after excuse after excuse. Bro, that is, he doesn't want to fight. I mean, you talk, like, so, and then I always see things about, like, Floyd and this and that. You look at Floyd, bro, when he was 34, 35, who'd he fight? 33. He fought Victor Ortiz, the number one. And then Canelo a couple years later. You know what I mean? So Floyd always fought well, the was, people. It was Victor Robert, then Floyd. Yeah, yeah, then Canelo. Yeah. yeah, Victor Robert didn't come Yeah, so Floyd always fought everybody, you know, even the young and even the young guys. So I mean, and that and Canelo was his first fight on the Showtime. Yeah, contract. exactly, exactly. Well, so, actually, um, Robert Guerrero was first. Cecil was a second. Yeah, second fight. So it's just, I'm kind of tired of speaking of Canelo, bro. I just, I'm, I was ready to make, I was been 
I did my job. He said that I, I needed some more big victories on my, my resume. I got two big victories. It was great fucking fights. I'm doing what I'm, what I'm supposed to do. And is this he doesn't want to fight? I mean, I don't want him nothing to disrespect I ain't front. Him. After that Benavidez fight, um, excuse me, uh, Andre fight, like my Sunday show, I'm like, Canelo's not going to fight yeah. for me. You I mean, look, I you look too dominant. You're too young. I mean, you're gonna be maybe nine years younger than him. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna disrespect him. I ne- and then also too, I, I never, it was never my intent to disrespect him so much. <laughs> it's just, that it's just people keep, that people keep though? people keep asking you. People keep doing interviews, this and that. And then it's just like to a point, man. Well, if does he want to fucking fight or not? But isn't that corny? You're a fighter. How can you get offended because another fighter wants to fight you? Exactly. And at the end of the day, we both, it's not like he just makes some money. It's not like he just shows up. He makes some money. as well. To, for him to make the most amount of money, he needs a dancing partner. I'm that fucking dude. But, I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't want to, it, it don't even matter to me no more. Now I'm going up to 175 and I'm going to try, you know, um, I'm going to go up there and win those titles and then. Maybe in three years when he's about to retire, that's when he's going to want to make the fight. So we'll, we'll see what happens. What and YouTube family, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.